<laughs> just kidding. Just uh, kidding. This is now the Ed, Ben, and Chris show. Hello. I'm well, not messing up. Welcome. Uh, we're doing our Thursday night virtual tasting. We do it here at ONS every Thursday at 6 p.m. We do four wines from all around the world. Never replicated a single wine over the years we've done this. And since you can't be here with us, we film it so you don't miss a thing. We got two beautiful reds here today, Chef. <clears throat> And I don't see why we should take any time to open these bottles because it is what it's late thirty. It's like midnight. I heard the I heard a rumor about a village level of Coca Run. Yes, and if you're wondering who this guy is in the middle, he's the guy that makes all this possible. All of it. This is his winery, and we are well. We I've been kind of trying to help in the winery today. Ben's been uh, guiding me a little bit down in the cellar. He's a great teacher. And uh, it's it's fun. It's dirty work. I, you can't. We you talked can't about tell. it on the last video. <laughs> we did. Last video we touched on it's like everybody loves the sexy wine tastings. It's not sexy. Everyone loves the sexy wine tastings and the nice dinners. But the behind the scenes, what brings these sexy bottles to your glass is a lot of hard work. It's a hard work in the vineyard. It's hard work in maintenance. It's a hard work to harvest. And so we've, we've touched on this, and now that we're in the heart of harvest season, we're seeing the, um, the, the extrapolation of that when, when uh, our psalm gets down there and gets his shoes dirty because he doesn't have boots. Yeah. Uh, and he's, covered, he's covered in grape juice and, and, and soot. I never had... Uh, All for your betterment. I never knew what I was getting into, but I'm sure am glad I know now um, a bath's going to be great tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, cheers, my friend. Cheers. 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 Here, help. Mm. See you in. So soon we'll be tasting some Old North State wines. Uh, they're they're in the um, pressing stage right now, and then they'll go through fermentation. But you know, as we wait for those, we're going to talk about wines of the world. And you know, it's important for me to have everyone understand the great wine regions of the world, so that you understand why the Yakima Valley wines are special. Every place should have a sense of place, every wine should have a sense of place, rather. And we certainly have that here in Yakima Valley. But we are going to start tonight with a Cote de Rhone Village level. Now, if you don't know Village level, that is an elevated rating. Uh, very few wineries have that significant title to the name. And it's roughly, let's just say it's about the top 10%. In roughly. a region where everything is elevated? Right. It's a heck yeah. of a thing to be elevated. It's doubling down. And of course, Chef Chris, I don't know how, if, I don't know if you can count the bottles of Coke de Rhone you've had in your lifetime. Ask my doctor. Yeah. yeah. He'll tell you. Yeah, that's why you're in tip top health. Well, you know what? Uh, 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 an active lifestyle. I said it before, say it again. You know, I spend all my days on my feet. I work, I lift, I work, I lift, I walk, and I go home and I work and I lift and I lift. And you know, despite all my terrible habits, all my numbers are great. That's all right. my blood work is great. They actually lowered my insurance premium because my numbers are so good. You're a valuable citizen. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I mean, to me. Mm -hmm. So, there's something to be said about an Argarian lifestyle where wow. you eat fresh food, you eat fresh fish, you eat fresh vegetables, and you spend your days on your feet, and you don't sit on the couch and watch yeah. TV. It'll Sedentary make you is not good. Sedentary will, will, is an early death, so I'm defying the odds and hopefully get another three years out of this life. I think you got it, Chef. So this I is from this, thing this is from Lanier. Uh, you may know them, some of you, uh, being shouting up to pop fans like cool. Chef Chris is. This is a fine producer. Thanksgiving's coming. Grenache Syrah Mouvedre. This is the baseline for all the great Southern Rhone wines. And you will see here, really, uh, if you're familiar with Cote de Rhone wines there, they are quite delicious, uh, somewhat rustic. When you get to the village level like you have here, you will start to see a more polished, fuller fruit uh, profile, but still that great Cote de Rhone flavor. You're not going to mistake this for Chateauneuf, but you can see the transition, how we go from Cote de Rhone, Cote de Rhone Village, and then potentially, because uh, this is the same kind of producer, a Chateauneuf, or, or maybe 
uh, a Jigen Das, or maybe, I don't know, a Ventoux. But all of these regions are in the southern Rhone, but Cote de Rhone covers a, a vast area where Village is a little bit smaller. And uh, every time you kind of break down these regions into smaller regions, they're more terroir oriented, they're more of a place, and that's what we look for in our wines. We want to know that there's a place that this came from, not just some big company conglomerate, just, you know, uh, just so big they don't even, stuff. yeah, there's no soul to the wines, and yeah. these wines certainly have soul. Um, Ben, what are your, what's your impression of this beautiful Grenache Syrah Mouvedre right out the gate? It's fantastic. Uh, I think it's one I should revisit. <laughs> so over and over and That's over great. again. You can't, you can't trust your first instinct. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got dense fruit here, without a doubt. Beautiful acidity. This is mouthwatering. Texture is phenomenal. Extremely fine tannins here. Unfortunately, this is the kind of wine that could get me in trouble because I don't want to put it down. Every time I set this glass down, my, my arm is reaching back for it. There is such a, uh, I don't know, it, it just kind of gets a grip of your, of it your is, desires. It's a grippy, it's a grippy <laughs> wine on, on every level. I mean, not only is it grippy with its tannins, it's grippy on its uh, on its appeal. Absolutely. And uh, you know, to me, like when you say village to the layman, because I'm a layman, I'm not a psalm like our chef Ed here, the lame one. You say village. I mean, like this is a Cote de Rome. We talked about Ventu. We talked about Chateau de Tapas. We talked about Gigandas. To me, it's like a, a, a village makes you takes the Cote de Rome to those those things, and so you're immediately transformed, or you're immediately thinking it's all it drinks on the level of a, of a Ventu or a Gigandas or a Chateau Neuf. And to me, you would. I mean, it's every bit as good as any oh, of those yeah. wines on any of those platforms. Uh, when you, when you talk about a village level, it's it's a whole different ball game. Cote de Rhone, that's my daughter. It's my beautiful <laughs> thing. I love you. It's, it's your ride or die. However, you know you're into something special. Absolutely. The village level. And you know this is where you get a lot of bang for the buck at under thirty dollars. You're getting a you're getting a wine that would rival. We're charging fifty though, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, this particular episode we're gonna uh, we're gonna charge sub thirty. Uh, but I want you to note that this is a 2019 vintage. And for those of you that, that don't know, Southern Rhone was crowned with four straight incredible vintages and 15, 16, 17, 18, now 19 bringing in for the Incredible. fifth straight Incredible. year. Uh, We're looking at a remarkable streak like they've never seen before. It's reminiscent of what we thought were the three greatest vintages of all time there in Napa in 13, 14, and 15. But we couldn't believe that they had the three Thank best you. vintages in a row. And now I'm not saying these are the five best vintages of all time, but they are such at an elevated level. These wines are going to be collectible. They are extremely ageable. You'll notice the acidity in this wine, the which is perfect. Right the top. It's, but it's, it's not something that's offensive. But what it tells me is the ageability here is going to be phenomenal, coupled with those tannins, of course. And we all know that, that how Syrah can just age and age and age. Uh, Mouvedre also no slouch to aging when it's paired properly so chef speaking of paired properly real quick though tell me about i mean i, I know the basics mm -hmm. but so the acid on this is is that a prerequisite for a good ageable wine or is that just uh, another building block towards an ageable wine so like so you know like grenache not only known for its acid but uh, uh, this you know the combination is the acid simply uh, an inhibitor to that or is it is it a is it like you can't do it without it yeah it's uh well i mean you can you can look at it two different ways if if it's a white wine you're probably going to need the acid yeah uh, riesling the most famous white wine that is so ageable uh you can have a hundred year old riesling that's made properly to age meaning that it has that acidity levels it was picked to maintain uh the the acidity levels and it had those those uh, diurnal shifts at night where it maintained, even through ripeness, maintained its acidity. So acidity is certainly something that can get you there for a very long time. 
or tannins. Tannins is another. Uh, we're getting we're getting we really getting, beautiful tannins right. on this. I now mean, you're not like, getting any oak especially tannins. Especially on a 19. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and you're not getting oak tannins here. These are great tannins. So there's two different kinds of tannins that you can get that will help preserve a wine for a long time. You couple acid and tannins, well now you've got something even more special. Now, Southern Rome, they're not gonna use fresh new oak. They're using neutral oak almost exclusively, or, or you know, they could even use things like uh, neutral, uh, uh, like concrete. You know, something that's not going to necessarily impart much, uh, there's not a lot of interaction with the wine. And so so that's to keep the integrity of the terroir? The, so yes, the, the absolutely. The doesn't affect the, the natural absolutely. flavor of the grape. And it's, and it's interesting, Chef, that you and I look, or, you know, we, and it's, it's not that we don't love oak, because we do love we oak. We do. You know, we, we like oaky wines. But time and time again, when you are talking about our favorite wines, they tend to be wines that just have natural tannins. In Always. Them. And Always. Like, like the Nebbiolo grape and Barolo. Oh. So, Amen. You know, and these these wines are ageable with natural grape tannins. You don't have to have oak tannins, and this is a perfect example of why Chateauneuf is the perfect example. And this is a great Chateauneuf producer. They just happen to be giving us a, a certainly more modest uh, offering. But wow, you're not slouching. Well, I on think flavor. they went out to give us a moderate offering, and they ended <laughs> up. Yeah. Ended up by a happenstance giving yeah. us an above average. This is a great time to be buying up, like I said, be buying up Southern Roan 15 through 19s. They're all going to be ageable. They're all delicious. And I mean, just remember, if you're, you're, certainly with, with, with premium producers, of course. If your seller, because I mean. Oh, that, that Ben brings up a great point here. When you get into the ageability, there is the fact that alcohol levels also help with that, and we are looking at at least 15% here. The labels don't always tell the truth, but I thoroughly, from my, my tongue and my esophagus and belly, they are telling me that there's certainly some alcohol in here. Yeah, yep. The, um, well, and- So we're and, talking about the tannins, the alcohol, the right. acid, and the whole yep. picture. Yeah, absolutely. So, Chef, back to the the big the big pairing here okay so uh as as providence would have it we're gonna have a village level field of creams mm. so we've been uh enjoying uh prodigal farms uh, of course in rougemont right outside of durham north carolina uh high-end artisan uh you know cheese maker creamery uh we've been enjoying their field of creams it's a seasonal goat cheese Delicious, wonderful. Well, guess what they did? They made a village level that is so field cool. of creams. So before it's been just the uh, the purity of the goat cheese with the ash. Well, right. Guess what they've done this year? This year for their seasonal offering, we have rosemary, we have fennel, we have pepper. Um, so we have all these different uh, uh, spices and herbs infused into the rind as they brush it in with the fresh milk that. Uh, Go, goes in and, and seeps into the, the cheese. Um, so really, they've made up a lot That's, of level. Yeah, and we're talking good. about some major flavor infusion. Oh, super incredible. I have black pepper, big time. Uh, they do the Tillahook uh, pepper, which is like a normal black pepper, a little larger, a little more uh, robust. Um, and so you can actually see um, the pepper and herbs and, and spices on the rind there. And of course, we've topped it with a little bit oh, of yeah. uh, candy pecan. Uh, just to give it a, a, a contrast of a uh, texture. And dig it in no, no, yeah, please. That's what it's for. And uh, and Ben, that's that's yours there. And so, of course, we're keeping true to the tasting. We're using the same containers you have at home. <laughs> so we're tasting along the same way. It's going to be it's going to be wonderful. And we've allowed this cheese to temper uh, for about 15, 20 minutes here. So it's at the perfect uh, tasting temperature. You know, cheese right out of the walk in. Uh, it's fine if you're having a a pedestrian cheese but an artisan cheese you certainly want to allow it to temper to let all the character come out and i think we've accomplished that here chef i don't have time to talk right now. <laughs> Under, understood so i'm just going to keep talking about this because they're kind of dumbfounded by this uh village level um field of creams prodigal farms one of our earlier partners earliest partners here at old north state as we've done our transformation uh into um uh, our current style of cuisine and certainly at the chef's table 
and a lot of our specials, you know, in our in our charcuterie boards that we offer with our tastings and at the table. We're very well known for our local artisan cheeses and charcuterie. Uh, Prodigal Farms has been integral and in and, and our uh, ascension to that. It certainly sets us apart from so many people uh, in our county and our state uh, with, the, with the things that we offer. Um, and so we're, we're just really proud. We've done a, uh, we've done a wine dinner with Prodigal yeah, Farms that was, as well. That was awesome. Uh, I've had the owners here and, and just been a wonderful time. And they continue to impress uh, so they don't rest on their laurels. They're not sitting back and going, oh, we like our field of creams. They're saying, no, we, it can be better. And so that's what we're trying to do here with our wines and our, with our cuisine. And so we honor them and they honor us with this. I think it's a great pairing. Yeah, I gotta tell you, it's, it's, it's interesting. I find that the cheese changes the wine more than the wine cheese. And that <laughs> cheese makes the fruit really pop in this. The fat, it really brings out those tannins. Uh, in this, I think it's it's remarkable. Wow, it, it's it's really cool. You know, Chef Chris and I get to do these chef tables every weekend, where we're we're pairing seven or eight different foods and wines, and it's just it's always interesting at the end of the day how everything the chemistry changes things in the palate for the better. For the for the better, and then, you know, people at home they think, well, you know, tomato basil goes with this and that and that and this. It, it's it's really fascinating to see Ed's um, uh, approach uh, to these foods and how he pairs. No, 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 he always no. pairs to a uh, to an that's a to an item you wouldn't associate uh, a wine pairing for, and that's where his genius really shines at these chefs' tables. A lot of people would pair to the protein, or or to a really uh, obvious ingredient where uh, Ed does not, and his genius really shines in that, and it brings out. Uh, characteristics of both the dish and the wines that you wouldn't expect. Uh, it's 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 a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing to watch, and the, and the collaboration is really enlightening um, to be able to to witness. Well, I can't do it without uh, the inspiration that you provide, Chef. That's for sure. And uh, I want to just I don't know. I'm hoping that you can see this cork. It is absolutely perfect. That's stained, perfect purple. restored. Mm -hmm. And this is so now we're getting into. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, and, and as, a, as a winemaker here, he understands the quality of the cork that is in this bottle. So now we're gonna get into- Two quality corks. Yeah, we're gonna get into an aged wine. Uh, this is a Bordeaux style, but it is from Stellenbosch, South Africa. Now that uh, is not your typical style. I'm gonna tell you, this is this is atypical. And, is, and it's kind of a throwback ooh, in a way. Yeah. So- What a um, nose. The, the wine, the, the owner of Pinchon Longerville, which is a second growth Bordeaux. So you're talking about elite. If you just look up, look up some of the prices on their wines, hundreds of dollars a bottle, if you can get them. Um, this wow. young lady made, she sold it because her family wasn't interested in taking it over. So she sold it and started another winery. I believe she's in her 90s at this point and starts um, a winery in Stellenbosch, South Africa. And she is doing Bordeaux varietals. And we have Chris and I have been, you know, banging the drum for South Africa a lot. Yeah, we have. Yeah. This is really cool because this is a, um, this is, a, you know, someone that came from Puyak, you know, and, and you're talking about someone that, that, that has been making wines in a certain way. And now all of a sudden you're in a completely different part of the world. And we all know the importance of terroir. And Chris and I would strongly believe that South African wines, no matter what you grow there, taste like South African wines, just, like, just it. like Italy. But like Argentinian wines, like all yep. the Bordeaux guys are down in Argentina. Yeah, right. And their wines taste like Bordeaux. Yeah. But all the Bordeaux guys down in South Africa, their wines taste like South Africa. Is that not, I mean, yeah. it's, this is, it's bizarre. So here you have, also, I want to note that this is more of a 19th century Bordeaux blend, back when they used to do Syrah. Now, many of you know, uh, we, we've done Shirazes from South Africa because they call, just like Australia, they call yeah. Syrah Shiraz. And so there is, Syrah has been proven to do well in South Africa. So this young, let's, talk, let's call her young lady because it's awesome what she did, just totally. No kidding. You know, you know, changed her whole world late in life. So she has added Syrah back to her Bordeaux blend. So you have Cab, 
Syrah Cab Franc and a little Petit Verdot. But Cab's driving and Syrah's right there. So this is atypical now of, of left bank wines, or even right bank wines for that matter in Bordeaux. Syrah has been left out of the mix, but that wasn't always the case. But you know, many, well, now you're looking at over 100 years ago, there, there was Syrah in the mix. And uh, so it wouldn't have been, this would have been a typical blend in, in the good old days, if you want us to call it that. And also I want to make a note here that, you know, when we're talking about South African wines, many times we are thinking about fresh wines, new wines, uh, you, know, in the, you know, within a couple of years of the vintage. This is a 2014, and as I was alluding to, the, 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 the aging and storage on this was perfect. It's a perfectly stained port, which tells us this, this winery's been taking care of their product perfectly, and I'm not surprised. You can surprised. tell the, the, the you know, <clears throat> Madame right. has, has brought her processes oh, yeah. from France the to South, is, and, and is, so, yeah. you know, her, she's going into the cellar, she's going into the field, and, and she's instituting these standards that you would have in Bordeaux in South Africa, so it's not just the expression of the fruit sure it's also that the, the french style of technique absolutely and that is being instituted and it's you know clearly uh, uh on display with the cork and and the and the freshness of the bottle absolutely and it's so a beautiful label too. yeah uh, yeah board? ben was talking about so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk it i'm gonna walk it over our high production set you know i don't have like little editors that can why didn't do, you let do, our do, sound person so this is doing. right yeah uh, we do have a sound dog there's a there's a beautiful puppy at rosie's my feet. on top rosie's rosie is behind the scenes so this is glen ellie they're a state reserve and um i love how that's what it's called it's not called anything else other than their state reserve there's no mention of the grape or bordeaux varietal that is just what it's called so in other words this is would be her signature uh, wine in a sense and that's the expectation this would be you know the standard by what she would uh, expect from her winery and uh, it's great for South Africa to have this kind of injection of old school even you know almost ancient by design with adding Syrah to the Bordeaux blends I mean this, how this, wonderful this, is that it's great I love these throwbacks I love yeah, when we had the guys from Cedarburg here, we did a big uh, yeah, South oh, yeah, wine absolutely. dinner. Those guys were awesome, and how they were trying to uh, to bring back the Bucatro grape. Yeah, I love these winemakers that are trying to do some things other than just go with the flow. They're actually stretching out, uh, getting you know, taking chances with different blends or different varietals, and you know, when you do that. It, it, it just makes some magic, I think. Well, you know, it's so it's so funny now that you know the modern risk-taking winemaker is not uh, shunning tradition. Right. The the modern rebel winemaker is actually reaching back. They're trying to regrow those ancient grapes. They're trying to pull back those grapes that have been forgotten, while simultaneously looking for new techniques. Um, to, to blend with, and I think that's really, and I think I, I know I've said this before, but uh, uh, Mailer, who was one of my favorite composers, said tradition is not worshiping the ashes, it's tending the flame. Right. And you're supposed to tend the flame, not worship the ashes. And so we can keep tradition alive, but we can also reach back. Absolutely. And, and reaching back is not uh, the enemy of reaching forward. Right. And we can bring these two worlds together and find something beautiful and new without, you know, stomping on sure. the people who got us here. And, and then, we, like, we, have a, we enjoy a great view from the people who got us here. We should honor um, everyone who, you know, who paid the pride, the pioneers who got us to where we are. But at the same time, we're supposed to honor them by keeping it going. Right, and I want to make note here that, you know, when things change over time, there's reasons for it. You know, there was financial reasons. There may have been, uh, you know, obviously phylloxera was such a big thing in the late 1800s. There was a lot of things that have changed the way of the wine world. And uh, grapes that were very difficult to produce 
our, our, but now we have flash forward to our modern time. In the last 20 years, there's been so many advances in viticulture, how to, you know, how to really mold wines and get the best out of grapes. If we had that knowledge further back, they you know, wouldn't have gone many, extinct. Many of these, yeah, many of yeah. these grapes wouldn't have been at risk of extinction or did ex You know, we, we yeah. wouldn't, we wouldn't yeah. really know if they did or not. But you know, there, there well, is. We're finding out every day yeah. with DNA. They're like, right. hey, they really didn't go extinct. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So uh, there's some over there. I, it's, a, it's a great time to dig back into the past and using new technology to lift things up that maybe just were obsolete at the time for the tools that we had. Does that make sense? Uh, it couldn't make any more sense and it is uh, perfectly articulated uh, because it's, it's simply true and I think you're seeing it in, in, in vegetable farmers as well. Oh yeah. With, with the our heirlooms beans and, and heirlooms yeah. and all these things. Yeah. You, you bring in grandma's stuff that she'd been storing for a hundred years and we're, we're repropagating these crops that were thought right. forgotten with corn and beans and all these things. Yeah. And so while of course it's true with wine. Sure. Because yeah. it has been planted on every continent, yeah. everywhere you go, in every yeah. climate, right? And uh, why in the world would it not be the case? Absolutely. And just What's the sustainability. So you have a um, yeah. Uh, so sustainability is a huge thing in South Africa. It was. I mean, it's big everywhere. Particularly, it's for whatever reason. But I think reason, they have a process. Even, yeah. So certified. Right. Yeah. They yeah. have a certification, uh, and you, you know, it's there is there's biodynamic. There is uh, obviously organic and there's sustainability. All of these, there are three different things that you can reach for. Uh, and and it, it really depends on what you're capable of doing. Not everybody can do organic. I mean, uh, I don't know that you could in North Carolina because of our climate. Uh, I mean, maybe one day, I don't know. But, uh, you know, there has to be the right climate to do certain things. Um, uh, the sustainability, of course, uh, which is a, you know, on many people's radar, and when I, there's a there's a there's another one, and I can't remember what it has to do with water, um, and I wish I could remember it right now. But we just we just did one of the wines that they were very uh, water conscious, and there's a there's a uh, a movement for the water. I think it's out in California, obviously, because they're they're well, I mean, their water. drought is so but there's, there's significant. There are, there's many certifications that people look for. Biodynamics is probably the most popular right now in winemaking, um, which, you know, a lot of people are kind of, you know, eh, it's, it's kind of weird. I mean, there's some, there's some things, but it does work with the, with the, the cycles of the moon and, and kind of, you know, the earth, which, you know, most of the, most vegetation on earth is affected by lunar cycles, if not all things. Uh, there, there is certainly some truth to all these things. We're more worried in North Carolina about when the next hurricane's going to hit. And I think it was last year we had a double hurricane to worry about. But these are all things that are important. And, I, and I'll tell people this table side, you know, I really do appreciate when people are reaching out to do things organically or sustainably or biodynamically because they believe that it's better for the environment. And so thank you for doing that, each and every one of you. And if, if, if you can do it, do it. But it should be a great wine, period. You can't just have, you know, and Chef Chris and I, as chefs, we have talked battled, about this, a battle yeah. with this. You know, we always want to support local. But it doesn't do us any good to support local if the products are terrible and make us look bad as a chef because it's, you know, a bad Or even so, substandard. Or you know, substandard. It's, it's yeah. like, you know, if you want to play on this field, if you want to put your wine or your vegetables or, or what have you out there and you want to be sustainable, obviously you're going to have a lot of support in that endeavor because nobody, I don't know anybody you would meet to go, no, waste, <laughs> I'm against, waste more. I'm against, I want to yeah. waste more, pour it all right. in the creek. You right. know, no one is for that. However, <laughs> you know, I think there's a balance and there's also, I think people don't understand a the processes it's like you know if i wanted to say well you know i spent like a drunken sailor for a month i want to get it all back tomorrow right well i'm not gonna get it all back tomorrow right. i'm gonna have to sit down sober and go this is my plan and i'm going to save and do and, and cut these out and then down the road i'll be healthy again and i'll be back to zero so i think the same is true of wine and food and the environment you know, we can't just do whatever we want and then wake up one day and go, 
you know, and shame everyone who's like done what the, the status quo is. We have to work together. Yeah. To get and it takes time. And it takes time. Yeah. And you know, and, and certainly so many people I know, like uh, Bard Bard Land Farm, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. our one of our oldest uh, purveyors. Uh, we buy mushrooms and our coffee now as well. But we've been buying their mushrooms for six years, mm -hmm. and they've been organic for six years, and they've been sustainable for six years. Well, just this year, they decided to fill out the paperwork right. to become yeah. certified. And, and now they organic. got seven years. And so they did the paperwork, they did the things, and they got certified. And so now all of a sudden, they're like, Whole Foods wants them to grow all their mushrooms. Right. Well, we've been buying their mushrooms. Six years, same mushroom six years ago as they are today. Well, now they got this little sheet of paper that says they're organic, but they've always been organic. And I know there's a lot of people out there who don't have the time and the and the resources to to go through the process to be certified. And so you have people out there who are growing great grapes and they're growing great carrots and they're doing great lettuce. But they, they can't, for a lot of different reasons, go through the process sure. of being certified by the state of North Carolina. Right. And so it doesn't make... That's where the relationship That's what you're talking about. It's like if your, wines, you have to know them. if your wine's terrible and your carrots are terrible, who cares if you're organic? And if your wine is wonderful and your carrots are wonderful and you're doing sustainable practices but you don't want to get the certificate... Voila. Voila. Yeah. I mean, that, so that's where no get, to know the pe from. get to know the people. What, what are they doing... How do they treat you and all these things? Does anybody like this? Well, I liked it a lot more when I had more of my glasses. Well, we haven't even hardly talked about it because I keep distracting everybody. But this is well, we got a celebrity here. It's hard. Not to yeah, we're, we're the limelight is blinding. So we we have a you know we we've told you what's Thank in you it. We've told you all about where it's from. But at the end of the day, what does it taste like? Is it delicious? And I'm gonna say absolutely black this, I was, fruit. Oh yeah, licorice, yes. leather, pepper. I mean, it's all. There's even some uh, vegetality, maybe some tomato, roasted tomato. I was hoping there was gonna be vegetality, and there is. But it's it's like a it's like a green. We talking about coffee. It's like a green coffee. Right, right, right. You know, pre-roasted coffee mm -hmm. kind of thing. I mean, yep. it's, it's, but it's because it's bold. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, it's a beautiful one. So, Chef, what are you going to aim at this? So, we've got our asparagus, which I was hoping when you told me yeah, I only had like three seconds to plan. Right. But when that's, you told me it's South African Bordeaux, I was hoping for green. Yeah. Uh, so, we've got our green, and we've got our brininess from our – this is, is a different crab. This is a uh, actual uh, claw meat. Which I don't normally buy, but the crab market is insane right now. Yeah. Um, so I got really lucky to get some of this beautiful uh, claw meat, which is actually incredibly. Look how fat oh, yeah. and lumpy yeah. it is. Yeah. Is that not cool? I always different, like claw meat. It's I, a different I have flavor. To, I have to. It's a different flavor, but I think combined with this asparagus, and we've got some gorgeous sausage from Darcy Farms. This is their andouille. So I think the spice from the andouille. With the uh, uh, you know, the greenness of the asparagus, the brininess of the crab, it's going to match the complexity of this wine. It's a very complex wine, so we needed some complex combinations to go with it. Mm. It crab kind of holds it down too. It does, and um, actually, because it's balmy, it really stands up against this red wine. With mm -hmm. meatier, mm -hmm. the, the lump yeah. is brinier, the claw is yeah. more meaty, in my opinion. Of course, everybody, you know, will yeah. look at it different, but I think it's it's better suited for a wine of this heft. Sure, I totally agree with that. And, uh, you know, the, the sausage here, it's it's not overly spiced. Well, that the subtlety of Darcy Farms is always on display, you know, and I think that's what we both admire and crave and prize uh, about Darcy Farms. It's like, you know, they're not out to be Spanish chorizo. They're out to be a North Carolina pasture-raised uh, pork. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a pasture-raised artisan pork, you don't want to be blindsided with spice and garlic. You want the, 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 the beautiful fat, 
to be first and the spice to be second. I think they accomplished that. Yes, and this this is a great pairing, Chef. Uh, I'll be honest with you. When I looked down, saw those three completely different things. Yeah, it's like, what does he do? Like uh, every Friday and Saturday night when you chef's table, I'm like, what is this guy thinking about putting <laughs> these things together? But yet, <laughs> but yet, <laughs> but every time it's like, oh, now I see why. Because yeah. you take a lot of risk and it always pays well, off. Well, you know, and, 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 and we have to. Yeah. Because, I mean, no one wants to pay us $300 for, um, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we're I mean, steak we're, and a baked potato. That's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, that's what we're here to do. Although we, I think we did have a couple people that wanted that. <laughs> and that's okay for them to want it. It's just we're yeah. not going to do it. And, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, they want, I know, well, whether they want it or not. I mean, what's the famous quote by Henry Ford? If I gave the people what they wanted, I would have made a faster horse. Yes, that's true. So we're not here to give people a faster horse. Right. We're here to show them your genius and your wine pairing, and we're here to show them my ineptitude in food pairing. <laughs> but I only, I'm a good sourcer of local food. But um, I, I think that it works, and we've proven it works, and, and thank God, because our owner has, has uh, believed in us for so long, and over the course of the past three years, we've gone from a high top that we yanked over here to this beautiful uh, uh, area that, that Ben has built us and it has grown every year since. And so well, we're just really honored and, and uh, humbled that you believed in us and invested in us. And we're the chef table continues to grow. The chef table continues to grow in prestige and in numbers. And uh, we're hoping it, that it continues to put Mount Airy on the map for all the amazing things that um, Mount Airy should be known for. I'm just thankful you all are here. Cheers. Hey, cheers. You know, I'm just thankful that you're all here and bringing this to our community. And you know, we have the opportunity to come down and you know, experience this caliber of food and wine in Mount Air. Yeah, it's a, it's a heck of a thing. We're, you know, and I love all the faces from all the other states that come here and they're just like, wow, why don't we have this back in our big city? If so, only DC and Atlanta had something like this. <laughs> Well, we appreciate all the support and all the watchers out there and tell a friend about us. If you can be here on Thursdays, do it. Uh, we're here at 6 p.m. It's kind of social. It's kind of fun. And uh, this week we have a couple of whites, too. And uh, what you got, what, what you you know, got there? You never know what you're going to have. I've got a beautiful Albarino and a Sauvignon Blanc from oh, Loire goodness. Valley. It's Loire Sauvignon Blanc. Yes. You can taste those minerals through the screen. That's right. So keep in mind that we never repeat wines. We're always doing something new, so there's never a reason to be bored, and we always have something new to talk about. Thanks for your time and all your support, whether it's to go or for in-house. We can't do it without you, and thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you to our special guest, uh, Ben Webb. Cheers, and thank you, and hey, thank you, you for... Thank you. This is a great tasting, and... Um, we, as always, we just want to reiterate um, uh, Chef Sentiments there that we appreciate all you do for us and we will continue to, to bring you this high quality video, these beautiful offerings for the foreseeable future, meaning forever.